The night was closing in on the town of San Francisco in 1852. A shadowy figure, identifiable only by his worn, broad-brimmed hat and cold, calculating eyes, ambled his way through the dimly lit streets. His name was Levi Boone Helm, but those who feared him knew him better as the Kentucky Cannibal. His heart was as barren as the desert he traversed, his soul as cold as the Sierra Nevada's winter wind. Yet this ruthless drifter hid his monstrous deeds behind a charming facade. Boone Helm hailed from Lincoln County, Kentucky. The rumors of his unpredictable nature and gruesome tendencies had found their way to the West. Known for his indulgence in violence and propensity to consume human flesh, he had a reputation that curdled the blood of those who knew him. As Boone stepped into the Lonesome Dove Saloon, the room filled with the haunting melodies of a lonely piano. The patrons, in various states of inebriation, barely acknowledged his entrance. With a wicked glint in his eyes and a crooked grin, Boone sauntered up to the bar. In one corner sat a haggard rancher, Thomas. He was a simple man, but known for his generosity. Despite hearing rumors of Boone's notoriety, Thomas, moved by the stranger's feigned friendliness, offered him shelter. Unbeknownst to him, he had welcomed a viper into his nest. Life at the ranch was hard and rugged. Thomas was an early riser, and Boone was coaxed into the rhythm of rural life. Yet the mask of sanity he wore during the day would slip at night. The whispering winds carried tales of Boone's dark deeds to the livestock, causing unease among the animals. One chilling winter's night, Thomas was awakened by a strange sound, a barely perceptible thump followed by a muffled groan. Creeping from his room, he found his living room bathed in an ominous moonlight, and his eyes widened in terror. There, in the center of the room, stood Boone Helm, soaked in blood, hunched over the remains of a missing drifter who'd been seen in town days ago. It was a sight so ghastly that it made Thomas's blood run cold. Panic overcame him, but he knew he had to act. He lunged towards his shotgun hanging over the fireplace, but Boone was too quick. With a wolfish grin, Boone charged at Thomas. A struggle ensued, the outcome of which was sealed in Boone's favor. With a fatal blow, Boone silenced the only witness to his horrific act. Boone's psychotic indulgence was interrupted by the sound of hooves approaching the ranch. The lawmen, tipped off by the town drunk who'd seen Boone lurking around the drifter, had arrived. Boone was forced to flee, leaving the carnage behind, promising himself another taste of his preferred meal later. In his flight, Boone took up with a band of criminals in Oregon. The group, unaware of his true nature, was awed by his audacious tales of the Wild West. They saw him as a fearless outlaw, not the unhinged man-eater he was. Boone had no intentions of sharing his gruesome diet with them. But when circumstances turned dire, his terrifying secret was revealed. On the run after a botched robbery, the group was trapped in the snow-capped mountains. Food was scarce, and hope was fading. It was then that Boone suggested the unthinkable, the survival tactic that had earned him his terrifying nickname. Shock turned to disgust, then desperation. The members dwindled, each disappearance sending a chilling message about their grim fate. Some fled, preferring to brave the wilderness than fall victim to Boone's monstrous appetite. One man, known only as Dutch Fred, decided to stand against Boone. His body was tall and wiry, his resolve made of steel. He was aware of the grim fate that awaited him if he stayed silent. One frostbitten morning, Dutch Fred made his move. He rose from his makeshift bedding, his eyes locked on Boone. His hands trembled, not from the cold, but from the fear that gnawed at his soul. Yet he swallowed his fear, standing tall before the monster that was Boone Helm. You're a devil, Helm. He spat the words out like poison. We ain't your lambs to slaughter. His bravery was met with a smirk from Boone, whose eyes held a terrifying gleam. A deadly silence filled the snow-covered clearing as the remaining men watched the standoff with bated breath. Then, quick as a lightning flash, Boone drew his gun. Before Dutch Fred could react, the echo of a gunshot filled the air. The snow beneath him stained crimson as he fell. His life extinguished as quickly as the spark of rebellion he'd tried to kindle. Boone stood victorious, the chilling satisfaction on his face a testament to his monstrous nature. The terror of Boone Helm was far from over. Leaving his dwindling gang behind, Boone traveled from one settlement to another, each place witnessing a bloody spectacle that painted the Kentucky cannibal's trail. Yet, every demon has its reckoning. 
boons came in the form of the Montana Vigilantes, an alliance of lawmen and citizens dedicated to bringing order to their lawless land. After aligning himself with the notorious Henry Plummer and his gang, Boone found himself facing justice. Captured and arrested, Boone was put on trial. His cunning mind, however, never failed him. He managed to save his skin by falsely accusing his friend, three-fingered Jack Gallagher, of the crimes he himself had committed. But Boone's deceit could only get him so far. His crimes were too heinous, his reputation too ghastly. The Montana vigilantes were not easily fooled. Boone, alongside Gallagher and the other gang members, was sentenced to hang. As the cold Montana wind whistled through the makeshift gallows, Boone Helm faced his end with the same cold-blooded indifference that had marked his horrifying journey. Hurrah for Jeff Davis, let her rip, were his alleged last words before he jumped from the hangman's box, leaving the horrified crowd in stunned silence. Boone Helm, the Kentucky cannibal, met his end not with remorse, but with a defiance that sent chills down the spectators' spines. In this cold, unfeeling manner, Boone Helm became a grim legend. His grave in the Boot Hill Cemetery of Virginia City stands as a chilling reminder of a man whose monstrous appetite etched a bloody trail in the annals of the Old West. His tale, a gruesome blend of horror and lawlessness, serves as a stark reminder of the lengths to which human depravity can stretch in the face of desperation and lawlessness. When you subscribe, be sure to hit the notification bell. Click here for more true scary stories.